The river of time is said to be unalterable, but with five different ages of Kryn, I would say it is more malleable than suggested. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and I'm going to discuss the five ages of Kryn with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell, and you can further help this channel and pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link in the description below. Dragonlance is most famous for its War of the Lance, set in the Age of Despair with the Dragonlance Chronicles trilogy of novels. But what set the stage for those events, and where did they lead? Let's get a bird's eye view of the five ages of Kryn. First and foremost, I am compelled to introduce you to Asnus of Palanthus. Dragonlance's deities are able to take many forms, so it's difficult to delineate the line between Asnus, the chronicler of history, with Gilene, the god of knowledge. Still, gods are known to take the forms of avatars and walk amongst the mortals of Kryn, so he might be Gilene's avatar, and still there are rumors that he's Gilene's son. Regardless of the truth, Asnus's Iconochronos is his immortal life's work, and he makes note of everything that happens with his sacred order of monks, the Aesthetics. After the Chaos War at the end of the Age of Despair, Astinus vanished and his work at the Great Library of Ages was picked up by Bertram of Palanthus. It isn't so clear as to Astinus's fate, as there is a mysterious herald that wanders the land with intimate knowledge of Kryn's history in the Age of Mortals. Some believe this may be Astinus with amnesia, and others perhaps a mortal gifted by the god Paladine. History is referenced by the first cataclysm, when the gods hurled a mountain at Kryn and changed its destiny irrevocably. Dates are referenced with PC, or pre cataclius and AC, or alt cataclius After the Chaos War, some ascetics began using SC, or secondus cataclius but Bertram maintains Asnus' dating system, and so will we. By way of breaking the fourth wall on events and dates, the reality is that different creators have worked on the same campaign setting over decades, so it's easy to find past publications with conflicting events and dates. I am referencing the Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition Dragonlance campaign setting, as it is the latest reference point. That may all change with the 5th edition of Dragonlance rumored to come, but for now, this is the most up-to-date reference that I'm aware of, if you have different sources, I would be very interested in hearing about them, but getting back into it. All of our knowledge of Kryn's history is thanks to Asnus and Bertram after him. So let's raise a glass to them both and dive into the five ages of Kryn. We begin with the Age of Starbirth. It is when the gods first created Kryn and populated it with its original species, the High God awakens and records the plans for this new creation in the Tobril, a book of all truth. He calls out to his children for aid in creating this world, and brother and sister Paladine and Tachesis answer. The High God summons Gilene to be the bearer of the Tobril and maintain neutrality in this new creation. Each God of good, evil, and neutrality summon their own supporters and together embody the pantheon of deities and begin creation. Reorx shapes the world into being, the other gods begin to populate it, Paladine and Tachesis have Reorx forge five rulers of the world, the five metallic dragons. Tachesis corrupts them and creates the five chromatic dragons. This begins the All Dragons War, causing the gods to withdraw into the beyond, creating the Dome of the Heavens, the Hidden Veil, and the Abyss, where they can each exist in privacy. This time of peace would not last, and when the gods discovered the sparks of Reorx's forge were alive, they fought over them for control until, ultimately, the high god was forced to return and force the gods to bless the sparks. Thus, the three races of Kryn were born, elves, ogres, and humans. The gods had children to act as a barrier between Creator and Creation, and the three moons of Kryn were born, Solinary, Lunatary, and Nuitary. 
Hidical tricked Reorks into crafting the Grey Gem, which Reorks accidentally trapped Chaos within, and placed it on Lunatary to create change in Chaos on Kryn from a distance. The Three Moons created magic with the power of the gem. Thus begins the Age of Dreams. We can divide the Age of Dreams into three distinct times, 9,000 to 5,000 PC, known as the Foundation. Ogres claim mountains, elves claim the forests, and man claims the plains. The age is defined by the rise and fall of the ogre nation, and the split of the decadent ogres with the enlightened Irda ogres. It also delineates the enslavement of humans to build the ogre nation and their eventual freedom. 5000 to 2000 PC is called the Time of Light. Reorx creates gnomes from the ogres, and one is tricked by the god Hittical travels to Lunatary to claim the Grey Gem and loses his grip on it, so it falls to Kryn, creating wild magic and change to all it comes into contact with. From the gnomes sprang Kender and Dwarves. From the elves, it creates the Sea Elves. The elves convene the first High Elven Council, Synthal Elish. They claim lands of forests inhabited by the Chromatic Dragons, and the Moon Gods craft the Dragon Stones for the Elves to win the first Dragon War with, and the stones are then buried in the Calchist Mountains. Minotaurs sail to Ancelon in war with and are enslaved by Dwarves of Calthax. The Dwarves split into two nations, and Minotaurs escape slavery, founding their own nation. Dwarves discovered the Dragon Stones and returned them to the surface, now the dragons are free and begin the second dragon war with their lizard men against the elves. The elves win at great cost, and the three moon gods create the Orders of High Sorcery to control magic on Kryn. Elves wage war on the humans and the half-elf species. Social change creates war, and eventually the elves, humans, and dwarves would find an uneasy peace with the formation of Quilinesty and the Hammer of Reorks being gifted to humans. The Time of Nights comes at 2000 to 960 PC. Pax Tharkas is built as a monument of peace between the elves, dwarves, and humans. The humans war with each other, and the Knights of Salamnia are formed. The High Clarist's Tower is built to protect Palanthus, and the Great Library of Ages appears overnight, and Astinus begins chronicling history for the first time. The Dark Queen plants dragon eggs around Kryn, and when hatched, are grown, and... They ravage the land, with the Third Dragon War beginning. The Order of High Sorcery creates dragon orbs to protect the towers, and one is placed in the High Clarist's Tower. Paladine directs Huma Dragonbane to forge the Dragonlands and defeat the Dark Queen, and the Age of Might begins. The Age of Might is about a thousand years and is defined by the rise and fall of Istar. Regional war and skirmishes over trade routes lead most nations to sign the Sword Sheath Scroll. Istar installs a king priest who acts as the moral standard of the continent of Ancelon. Racism erupts in Istar as the king priest draws line between good and evil, right and wrong. His priests lose their ability to use magic, and the other races grow disgusted by human arrogance. He decrees magic to be evil and directs the Tower of High Sorcery to be destroyed. Two towers fall before peace is made. The king priest declares himself a god, and the true gods send a warning of destruction unless the king priest is stopped. True clerics are removed from Kryn by the gods, and Lord Soth is given an opportunity to atone for his misdeeds and to save Kryn. He fails, and the gods send a mountain crashing into Istar, forming the Blood Sea and reshaping Ancelon. Thus begins the Age of of despair. This is separated by the time of darkness and the time of dragons, because you know the Dark Queen can't sit idle too long. She places a foundation stone to open a portal to the abyss, then loses it when Barim comes across it and becomes immortal with it embedded into his chest. Tikesis steals the good dragon eggs and uses them as leverage to keep the good dragons out of the coming war. The dwarves war with each other, and Fistandantilus destroys the armies from Zaman. The Hammer of Karas is taken. The Time of Dragons begins with the High Lords being named. Priests of Tachesis corrupt the good dragon eggs, creating Draconians. Eastern Ancelon is captured by the dragon armies. The Companions discover the true gods never left. The White Stone Council convenes to form an uneasy alliance against the dragon armies. 
The Dragonlances are rediscovered in Icewall, and the Dragon Orb is won from Sylvanost. New Dragonlances are forged. The Dragon Orb in the High Clarice Tower is used as a trap, and the Blue Oak Dragon Army is defeated. The truth of the good dragon eggs is revealed, and the armies of the Whitestone Council, together with the good dragons, fight back. Tachesis discovers Barum and captures him to open her gateway into the Abyss. The Heirs of the Lance discover Barum and use him to destroy the gateway, and the War of the Lance ends. Raceland Majir travels through time to defeat the Dark Queen and become the master of past and present, and his sister wages continued war with the help of the Death Knight, Lord Soth. Raceland sacrifices himself for his friends in the end, and Kidiar is defeated. Lord Ariakin forms the Knights of Tachesis, the Irida Ogres break open the Grey Gem to protect themselves, and unleash chaos. Raceland is saved from the Abyss by his nephew with the knowledge needed to defeat chaos. The second cataclysm hits Kryn as chaos minions attack all of the continent. Tachesis abandons Kryn, seemingly, and her knights and reorks seek to repair the Grey Gem. Tasseloff stabs Chaos, and a drop of his blood is used to recapture him. In order to banish him, all gods decide to leave Kryn. With the gods' absence, Tachesis returns and steals the world, moving it through space-time, but it is weakened by the act, and the Age of Mortals begins. The Age of Mortals is defined by the absence of the gods' magic and the domination of the great dragons over Kryn. The Dragon Purge lasts for 26 years and ends with Dragon Overlords reshaping Kryn. Goldmoon rediscovers magic as mysticism, and the Knights of Steel are formed. Draconians form their own nation and destiny. A great storm falls on Ancelon and Mina emerges. Akander appears with a device of time traveling, and good dragons are taken by Tachesis. Mina raises an army and defeats the great dragon Beryl and reveals she is the agent of the one god, Tachesis. Goldmoon rebukes the Dark Queen and dies. The other gods discover Tachesis' treachery with the help of Tasseloff, and Mina continues killing the dragon overlords. Paladine strips Tachesis of her immortality by sacrificing his own, and Tachesis is killed. With the gods and magic returned, and the dragon overlords gone, Mina remains a mysterious force for the gods to manipulate. She discovers that she is in fact a god herself and joins them in the heavens. And that is the current Age of Kryn. I know it was heavily condensed and much was left out, but I'll return in the future with videos about specific ages and even moments within the ages to discuss. What do you think about the different ages of Kryn? Do you have a favorite age? Who are your favorite influential characters throughout the ages? Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and like this video. You can support this channel and pick up some Dragonlance gaming materials by using the affiliate link in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, if I'm going to see the end of the world, I should see it with a positive attitude.